Greetings all in the mighty name of Jesus and welcome to our sixth session of Easter Reflections based on the seven last sayings of Jesus Christ on the cross. I am the moderator Victoria Hepburn and today's reflection will be from Pastor Lilith Chung from the Small Heath Church. Um, welcome and we are so happy to have you today. So while Jesus was hanging on the cross for six hours, he was able to muster up these seven statements that would be profound Im implications for all of human history. Over the last six days, we have explored these statements in detail. The first being, today you shall be with me in paradise. Then, Father, forgive them. Then, woman, behold your son, behold your mother. Then it was, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken us? Then it was, I thirst. And today we'll be exploring, it is finished. So the Bible says in John 19, 30, when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It is finished is found only in the Gospel of John, but I believe that it is finished was what Mark was referring to when he said, with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. I believe he spoke it out loud. He declared it for all to hear. He uttered a loud cry to his father in heaven for the whole world to know that it surely is finished and that his work on the cross was complete. When I was thinking about today, I'm praying about what I wanted to kind of get from it is finished. I was thinking on a few things and a few questions, and I hope you have these questions also. My question was, what or who is it in it is finished? What was finished? How did he finish it? And what does that mean for us that it is finished? And the Lord reminded me that when it comes to him, that if something is finished, it is paid in full. It indicates a debt was paid, it was complete, and that it would also continue to be complete or finished. It is accomplished. It has been paid in full. It is done. So we have to now live understanding that it is already done. The song I'm about to um, play, the songwriter said, it is already done. The battle is won. What you need is accomplished. It is already done. If it is healing that you need or saving or refuge, it is he. The song I'm about to play is called It's Already Done by Seth and A New Thing. So as we reflect on the fact that it is finished, it is done, he's already done it, he's accomplished it in full. Um, let's pray as we prepare ourselves to hear from Pastor Lilla. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a light to our paths we call life and strengthen our lives. Heavenly Father, give us faith to receive your word. 
understanding to know what it means and the will to put it into practice through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we, your people, will be able to live after knowing that it is finished. Um, I will now hand over to Sister Lilith for today's reflection. God bless you. God bless you. Good evening, everyone. It's um, it's a pleasure to be on this platform tonight to join with you on this holy week. Um, and I have the task to reflect on um, those three little words. It is finished. And our scripture text, I'll get right into it, um, is taken from John 19, verse 28 to 30. And in John 19, it says, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now, there was a set of vessels full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So of the seven things that he said on the cross, this, it is finished. I thought about the fact that it was just three little words. And even from the very beginning in Genesis, we see that God said, let there be. Those three little words that he said were very powerful. He said, let there be light. He said, let there be a firmament. He said, let there be waters. Let there be dry land. He declared and proclaimed, let there be. And it was. As powerful as those three little words were, um, they weren't the what happened at the end of his of, of creation when when he finished making all what he made and the plan of redemption. Here we see Jesus on the cross with three little words. God walked with Adam in the garden and he communed with him as friend with friend. And when sin came into the world, this plan was uh, immediately put in motion that the sacrifice of an animal to cover the nakedness of Adam and Eve was required. So God already knew that for sin to be placated in any kind of way, blood had to be involved. Blood had to be shed. So we know that Adam and Eve found some leaves and they covered their nakedness. But God came and he, he gave them skin, which means some animal somewhere had died in order to cover their sin or cover their shame. So blood had been shed from the beginning. So to redeem man back to mankind then, the word then was made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice and the mission was finally accomplished on Calvary with the proclamation of those three little words, it is finished. And in the Greek, that word is tetelestai, it is finished. His final utterance, his final declaration was just three little words. On the surface, it seems to be meager, a meager ending to such a, a, a ministry, to such a life, three little words. It didn't seem to amount to very much. But if you look back over Jesus's ministry, he also said three little words frequently before he did many things. For instance, he said to the storm, peace, be still. He told the leper, be thou clean. The woman with the issue of blood, he said, who touched me? He said to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come down. He said to the crippled woman, thou art loose. But even these three little words that preceded great miracles, yeah, these final three words that Jesus spoke, I believe packed the most greatest punch of all. It is finished. Praise God. It is finished. It is completed. It's done. It's ended. It's accomplished. Paid in full. Now, every Jewish person that was at the foot of the cross that day would have instantly recognized this word that he said, tetelestai. It's the equivalent of a Hebrew phrase that was used in the Old Testament sacrificial system. See, each year on the Day of Atonement, the high priest would enter into the temple and make special sacrifice for the sins of the people of Israel. And as soon as the priest had killed the animal, he would emerge from the, from the place of sacrifice and declare to the crowd that was waiting, it is finished in Hebrew. So in this sacrifice, all the sins of Israel were symbolically placed on the lamb that was killed. 
and, and was punished in their place. The sacrifice system was imperfect and it was only temporary. It could never really be complete or finished because the sacrifice of that lamb was only sufficient for one year. And it had to be then repeated year after year after year. But praise God, when Jesus died on the cross, he became the perfect and the final sacrifice for all sin. The book of Hebrews tells us that Jesus was the ultimate lamb of God. And by his sacrifice, the work of forgiveness was finally complete. Hebrews 9 verse 12 says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. And verse 26 of the same chapter says, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world have he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. First Peter 3 and 18 says, Christ suffered once, put to death once and for all, paid in full. Only his blood could do this. There's no other name by which man can be saved. The natural high priest does not sit down in the tabernacle after he's done his sacrifice. In fact, the tabernacle has no seats in there. There is no seat in the Holy of Holies. There is no seat in the inner court. There's no, there's no way to sit down because the priest's job is never finished. Next year, he has to come back and do it all over again. There's no seat for the high priest. His job isn't complete. He has to come back. But Jesus, the Bible said, he sacrificed his life. He shed his own blood. And the Bible says he sat at the right hand of the father. Why? Tetelestai. Because it is finished. It's done and dusted. Jesus had every right to sit down because his work was complete. He left his home in heaven. He left his glory and his majesty. And he put on the robe of flesh. He endured hunger and thirst. He endured pain and sorrow. He endured bereavement and loneliness, betrayal. He died a cruel and inhumane death and his body lay in a tomb. His spirit was quickened. The Bible says, for Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. And in 1 Peter 3, 19, it says, by which also he went and preached unto the spirit in prison. He went to preach to those soul, Peter says, that were in prison. Jesus delivered a message to, to them, to those spirits. There, there's much debate amongst, uh, amongst uh, uh, scholars regarding this scripture. And they want, some say, well, who did he really preach to? Was it a fallen angels, um, as, as uh, it alludes to in Jude? Some people say he, he preached to others uh, that had died in Noah's day. There's lots of different arguments as to who he might have been preaching to here. But in Ephesians 4, he says, wherefore, he said, when he ascended up, up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. So this could refer to an event uh, not elsewhere described in scripture, but namely that Jesus gathered all the redeemed that were in paradise and took them to their permanent dwelling in heaven. This is uh, securing their salvation on the cross. Jesus maybe uh, called out to Abraham and David and Joshua and Ezra and Jeremiah, the thief on the cross, and all of those that before salvation, they were in a place of the abode of the dead. But here he comes down and he takes the keys of death and hell and he says, Tetelestai, it is finished. He's able to take them now to their home as they rest until the day of his coming. I just hear him shouting, it is finished, come and follow me. And he sets the captivity captive, he sets them free as he goes down and says, come and enter into my rest. The veil, when he said those words, the veil that separated the Holy of Holies that went from the ceiling right down to the floor, the Bible says that it rent in two from top to bottom. No man could do that. 
that that they say that the thickness of that veil was about two breaths, hand breaths long, wide. It was thick. No physical human being could rip that that veil in half. But as soon as he said it was finished, the the the, the, the veil was torn in two. Why? Because now man did not have to go to a priest to go to God. No man could, could have done what God did. He moved that veil. He moved that barrier between man and God. And now he says that there's no more priesthood. There's no more need for sacrifices. There's no more need for the old covenant. This marks the ending of a system that I put in place that's now been fulfilled by the precious Lamb of God, Tetelestai. It is finished. The old way is finished. Now we have a new covenant. Now we have a new system in place. It is finished. You can now go boldly, pray God to the throne of grace, step into his presence. Anywhere you are, you can go into the presence of God. You don't need a mediator. You don't need a, a, a priest to take you in. You can draw nigh unto him because you have access you can go boldly to the throne of grace. Why? Because of those three little words. It is finished. Praise God. Tetelestai comes from the verb um, teleo. And it really literally means to bring to an end. So it means to complete or to accomplish. It's a crucial word because it really signifies the successful end to a course of action. So, for instance, it would be a word you would use, tetelestai, if you climbed Mount Everest, or it's a word you might use when you turn in your assignment, or a word you might use when you pay your last car payment. It's a word that you would use when you cross the finish line at your first marathon, tetelestai. It, it means, it means I've, so I'm not just I've survived this thing or I've done it. It means I did exactly what I set out to do. I know I'm not a Greek scholar in any way, shape or form, but this word tetelestai is in the perfect tense in Greek. And this means that the significance is the tense speaks of an action which has been completed in the past with results in the present. So what does that mean? It's different from just a past tense, something you did already, but it's a, it's a word that it looks back at the event and says, this happened. The perfect tense adds the idea that this happened and is still in effect today. So it's not just it happened then and it's done, but it's continually happening. So when Jesus cried out, it is finished, he meant it was finished in the past. It is still finished now in the present and it will be still finished in the future. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> Testalestai is the work is complete. So in the New Testament times, when, for instance, let's just say an employer had uh, given an employee a task to do, when he completed his job or his task, he would say to his boss, Tetelestai, it's a word that meant I've finished what I've been, you told me to do. This would indicate that whatever it was that he was assigned to do was complete. So when Jesus came to this world, we knew that he had a job. He told us in Luke chapter 19, for the son of man came to seek and to save those who are lost. So in his last words, Jesus was conveying that the work he came to do was accomplished. Salvation was completed in his work on the cross. It also uh, was used for in, in accounting. So in Jesus's day, this phrase or this word tetelestai was used for when somebody had a debt to be paid. And maybe the most common way actually that this word was used was for the debt collectors. When they paid off a debt, um, you paid off your loan and it was completely finished, they would stamp on your loan tetelestai. And it was, it was given as a receipt, this stamp to say, you don't owe me anymore because your debt is now paid in full. This was proof that they were no longer responsible for any of the debt that it had been, had been owed because now it was completely and permanently paid for. Our sins created a debt to God and one that we could never, ever pay back. 
not by ourselves. But when Jesus died, he was paying off our debt of sin once and for all. Our debt was paid in full. Hebrews declares, but our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. And when, and when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. That's Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 12. So what was he talking about when he said it is finished? Was it his ministry is finished? Was it my life is finished? Was it my suffering is finished? Jesus was saying mission accomplished. He was saying everything that I have has to be done has been done. It is finished. The earthly life has been carried out to its fullness. Every messa messianic prophecy has been fulfilled. The last suffering for sin has been endured. Nothing is left undone. It is finished. It wasn't a sigh of relief or a deliberate, you know, exclamation to say, oh, thank God that's over. But it was an it was a it was a cry of my work has been finished. It was a declaration and that all that God has purposed me to do, I have accomplished. Tetelestai, it is finished. All had now been done that could ever be done to make God known to man. Every sin has been paid for. Every evil deed has been judged. And the full and total price of our redemption has been purchased on the cross. Praise God. This is the power of the blood of Jesus. That is the glory of the Son of God. What is the depth of that Father's love? How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he would give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. Bless the Lord. Jesus perfectly lived a life and he lived a perfect one and died a perfect life, died a perfect death. He had to die that kind of death in order for it to be finished. He had to go all the way. When he was in Gethsemane, he said, if it be thy will, let this pass, because he knew what a horrible death it would be, but he was willing to go all the way so our debt would be paid in full. It is finished, paid in full. The healing of your body is paid in full. The healing of your mind is paid in full. The healing of, the, of your body, your soul, your spirit, it's paid in full. You have access to the throne of, of God, paid in full. Authority and dominion, paid in full. Joy unspeakable, paid in full. Beauty for ashes, paid in full. The oil of joy for mourning, paid in full. Peace that passes all understanding, paid in full. Garment of praise paid in full. Praise the name of Jesus. It's paid in full. All we have to do is put our faith in what the finished work of the cross. We've just got to believe that it's finished. We've got to believe that it's already done and follow the Lord who died and rose for us. Our works cannot save us, but the work that Jesus did for us on the cross can save us perfectly forever. Tetelestai communicates a beautiful truth that Jesus completed the work of salvation once and for all. He paid it in full. That means it's not up to us to add anything, to complete anything, to finalize anything. When it comes to our salvation, Jesus did it all. No matter what works we do, they won't change anything because he's already paid it all for us. So now when we have put our trust in the finished work of Christ, we can rest in confidence of our salvation and pursue God with our whole heart. So I hope that those three little words today have come alive for you. Tetelestai, it is finished. God bless you. Thank you so much, um, Pastor, on your reflection.
Tetelestai, it is finished, it is already done, it has been paid in full. And before I hand over back to Bishop Paul, um, I pray that after this session, we continue to reflect on those three words, that what Jesus meant and what when he said, it is finished, and what it should mean to us today. We should pray on the fact that it should mean that Christ has won the victory and that through him, we too are more than conquerors. I pray that it means that we are free from anything any thought, mindset, behavior that keeps us, us captive. I pray that it is finished means that nothing we should ever do outside of his relationship can ever earn favor of his love. But actually it means that we continue to um, live under, don't continue, sorry, to live under the weight of condemnation, guilt or shame. I pray that it is finished reminds us that we are forgiven, that we have purpose, hope and eternal life in him. I pray that it is finished tells us and reminds us that we are loved, more deeply than we could ever imagine, and that he had paid the price on our behalf. Um, I would like now to hand over to Bishop Paul for those who have any reflections or questions. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Victoria, thank you. I was just trying to type in quick enough to see if you want oh, any so. questions, but uh, <laughs> it seems to be the tradition to pass over to the pastor. <laughs> So Pastor Lil, thank you so much. Um, tremendous reflection. And, and again, I say to those listening, do go and, and listen again and just to take it in because sometimes it's difficult to take it all in at, at one time. But the good thing is that if these sessions are being recorded so we can go back and listen and, and just hear again. But um, tremendous and um, we are so blessed and thank you so much, Pastor Lil, for um, sharing this evening and i'm sure there'll be many questions many thought-provoking questions or just comments uh, that people may would have um this evening and um those three little questions and uh, uh thank you for that and also looking at the number of times jesus used those three little words that was were so significant and that are so significant to us even today so I'd like to um, open the, the, for us to, to share any questions, any thoughts that you may have. Don't be shy now, let's just ask our questions. Sometimes we ask questions, not, not necessarily because we don't know the answers, but it, it can provoke a discussion or help someone else to come to a better understanding. So please do ask some questions um, as we share. So who will be first? Can I ask a question, Mr. Alan? Yes, please go yes. ahead. Greet, greet, greetings, everyone. Greetings. Um, I'm, I'm having a conversation with um, uh, an ex-work colleague who's going through some quite challenging um, moments. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a Christian, um, but he's now questioning his faith. Okay. Um, and um, he said to me, I, I was sharing with him today about this very thing, you know, about it is finished. And then he said, the scripture says that you have, to, he understands that and he believes it. But the scripture says, you have to work out your own salvation in, with fear and trembling. So for him, he's saying, I believe that it's all paid for and it's finished. Yet the scripture says, um, you have to work it out. You have to work it out. Um, what's your thoughts on that scripture, um, um, Sister Lilith? <laughs> well, I, that's a tough one, really, because um, I'd, have, I'd have to read the context of when he said that, and I can't recall it completely. But um, working out our, our own salvation, we know for sure it's not salvation in the sense of being saved, because that was completed on the cross. Um, um, but I think maybe in the sense of... Um, protecting your salvation with fear and trembling looking at it as um how could i say it's not it, it, it it's it's precious and it's not it, it, it's it's you come by it by in it's free you know the salvation is free and you receive salvation but we should work it out with fear and trembling knowing that you know how how precious it is and how we should should guard it um and take care of it um and keep it 
um, and don't, I think that's um, how I would uh, interpret that scripture. I'm not. I'm not sure, Bishop, if you wanted to add to anything to that, but you know that that's how I would. In, you know, I would describe it because working it out, we know salvation's free. We know Christ died for us, and that plan was put in place. Um, or from the beginning, God so loved the world, He gave His only Son. Whosoever believed would not perish, but have everlasting life. So immediately there's salvation for you. But I think once you have it, you've got to work it out. Don't just think, oh, because it came free, I can do whatever I want. Um, I would, I would just, uh, at that time, I would say that. Yeah, I, I think, um, I think you're right. I think the word work, and sometimes people can be distracted by the word work, work out. And clearly, as Pastor Allen has said, uh, uh, has indicated, it's not about salvation. And as you have said, it's not about salvation coming by works. Working it out is living it out, living it out. And if you, it's actually Philippians 2, verse 12, where it talks about let this mind be in, in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Uh, that's how it began. Um, who did not think it rob considered robbery to be equal with God. In verse 9, he says, therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. Um, that the name of Jesus have been shall bow and confess that Jesus is Lord. In verse 12, he says, therefore, be, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence, but uh, now much more so in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It is For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. And so um, it, it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a case of um, salvation by works, as been said. It's a question as you live, as you work out, as you live your salvation, you do so with a sense of fear um, and, and, and reverence to, before God. Um, that's how I would see it, yes. So I think it's a mistranslation of the verse, I would yeah. say, Pastor Adam. Thank you. Uh, Sister Lil, uh, it, it wasn't meant to put you on the spot. It was just to get okay. you <laughs> Any other thoughts on that or anything else? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Mr. Werner. Hi. Um, as Lilith, Lilith has said earlier about the finished work, it's completed. It's done. Um, the Lord says it's finished. Christ says it's finished. Now, um, working, as Pastor Alan was saying, working out our salvation, working out, whatever it is we're working out, we have to work it out with the understanding that the finished work is completed, but in order for us to progress, we have to, we have to plan, we have to, we have to look at the scriptures, we have to examine ourselves, we have to take action in order to progress. The work is completed, but as human beings, we haven't reached there yet. So we've got to work out the path to get there and also in with fear and trembling. I don't know if I'm explaining it very well, but in fear and trembling, because you know it, the foundation is laid, but we have to um, tap into the assets of this finished work. How are we going to get to the place where the Lord wants us to get to? Um, am I making sense? I don't know if I'm yes, explaining. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, so it's 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 about working it out with fear and trembling, you know, making plans to move to the place where God wants us to be. And I do believe he wants us to be more than we are, every one of us. He wants yes. us to be more than we are. So we've got to work it out. How do we get there? It's going to take some intimacy with the Lord. It's going to yeah. take some some so, some prior, some in a, in, a, in a court experience and engagement with the Lord to get there. So it's working it out, not in pride, but to working out in, in humility, if that makes sense. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Barbara? Or is it your Brother Peter? It, it is me. It yes. is you. Okay. Oh, good evening, person. Good evening, sir. Let's see. Yeah. Um... As Paul um, said, we have to work out our own salvation. Yes, the Lord um, gave us salvation, but we have to look back at um, the way the Lord um, worked. Because from the beginning, he put two trees in the Garden of Eden to test. When the Lord came on earth, he was tested also. And we 
that God say, we have to, we're going through a lot of this all the time. So it's just how it works. We have to work out our own salvation, for our sin, because um, all these fallen angels, they're still around. They are the tested to test us. We have to go through them. And they are, and um, by the grace of God, because they are very clever to trip us up. So I understand when Paul said we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Okay, Th thank you, Brother Peter. Thank you for that. And it, I think it might be helpful if I there's a couple of uh, translation. If the um, the amplified version says. Um, so then, my dear ones, just as you have always obeyed in my in, obeyed not only in my present but now in my absence, continue to work out salvation, out your salvation. That is, cultivate it, bring it to full effect, actively pursue spiritual maturity with awe inspired fear and trembling. Um, so that's what the 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 um amplified how the amplified version puts it. The, the message says, um, what I'm getting at, friends, is that you should simply keep on doing what you've done from the beginning. When I was living among you, you lived in, res in responsive obedience. Now that I'm separated from you, keep it up. Bear, uh, sorry, better yet, redouble your efforts. Be energetic in your life of salvation reverent and sensitive before God. That, so, so it's not so much, it's not so much about working it out in the sense that the salvation has been purchased. And um, you know, the, one of the statements that Pastor Lil used was that um that the full and total price of our redemption has been paid on the cross. The full and total price of our redemption is paid for on the cross. So it's nothing to do with obtaining salvation it's a, more about how you live out your salvation yeah. how you cultivate it how you develop it the seed has been planted but it must be cultivated it must be developed it must be worked on and in the sense of in order to, to nourish it and keep it alive um if we don't do that we will we will, we will lose our way so that's what that's about but okay i think um we, we let's move on to a, so another question another thought Lot, so much has been said. It is finished. Um, is there someone else who wants to say something? Yes, I'd like to say something, please. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, Paul said, um, another foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Yes. And he encouraged us that we must take heed mm -hmm. of how, what we put on this foundation. Because he said, if, you put, if we put um, gold, silver, um, whatever we put, put on this foundation, which is Jesus Christ, um, everybody's work shall be made manifest yes. by fire. Mm -hmm. So if we put stubble, if we put hay on there, you know, we know what will happen with the fire. It's going to be tried by fire. So mm -hmm. in working out our salvation, we've got to be careful Yes. What we put up on the foundation, because hmm. another foundation can no man lay than that which is already laid. Hmm. And Jesus Amen. laid that foundation. So when we are building, make sure what we put up on this foundation. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Sam. Anyone else? Um, like I said, if you want to make a, a statement, if you want to just make a comment or ask a question, then please do so. Um, hi, um, it's just a, a comment um, that um, Pastor Lilla said in, in her um, reflection about um, the Old Testament when the priests were in the temple and um, there was no seat in the temple, that, so they had to stand. Um, and then in, I think it's in Mark, I think it's on the end of Mark where they said they, um, that Jesus is sat on the right hand of God. So I suppose that where Jesus is sat beside God, that it was really, really finished, if you get what I mean. Even though he said it was finished, it was. 
But the fact that he was sat down uh, and he's our high priest. So I like that um, analogy that you did, Lila. Yes, yes, that, I did. I did take note of that. That was quite an interesting one. And it also then raises because we said all along that reflections are about Jesus on the cross. But it's about it's also about how do, do these words? What do these words mean to us? as we navigate, as we work out our own salvation, as it were, uh, as we navigate it, as we cultivate it, and we make the journey through, through in, our, in our own life. What does it mean for us? And that's that word, um, it is finished. And, and what Sister Joanne just mentioned about Christ being seated. You know, now that he's finished, he can sit down. But then it seems sometimes as if we are sitting down. Right. And our work is not completed. They're sitting down. There's a lot of sitting down going on. People have sat down, but haven't finished what God has given them to do. Yet Jesus did not sit down until he's finished. The priest didn't sit down. Jesus didn't sit down until he was yet he completed all that God has given him to do. But I see, I, I, I see today that there's a, everybody, well, not everybody. So many people want to sit down and we just want to sit down and just, just eat and just receive and grow fat. But we, we are not pursuing the mission and the purpose that God has given us to do. And, and it was interesting that Jesus, Jesus went through and he, he, obed he was in obedience to God's will. Although that obedience cost him dearly, he suffered. You know, sometimes in order to be obedient to God, we have to go through some things. We have to suffer some things in order to be obedient. But sometimes if you're not careful, we don't want to go over any hurdles. We don't want to fight any battles. We just want to relax and everything just come to us and we just, you know, we just relax. So I think there's an interesting thought there about sitting down. We can't sit down until the mission is completed. But I feel like God's people sometimes are just sitting down and just looking when we ought to be working and doing God's will. I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on that. I think also that um, as, as Christians, if we really um, accepted, so the finality of the fact that he's sitting short shows you that he's finished, he's all done with it. So then we should live as if the work of the cross is complete. So we, the, the way we live sometimes as Christians is almost below standard we're not living as if that work's been completed it's it you know that there's we almost act as if there's still stuff we need to do a lot of people say oh i've got to change and i've got to do this before i can come to christ for instance you don't have to do that it's already finished it's already done you just yes. got to come you know so the mm. finality of it the fact that he's seated at the right hand of the father just puts a it puts a you know full stop right there it's done you know he's sitting down Yes, yes. So absolutely, that salvation, that that that, that the way have been has been been, been, been secured, and yes, absolutely. And and we make that distinction between, you know, salvation and and we don't we don't we don't work for our salvation, but having received salvation, we 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 are, there's work that God has called us to do. And so even what we're talking about, people sitting down or not sitting down, it's also about. It's not about people working for their salvation. It's about people having being having come to Christ. We now follow uh, through and do what He has called us to do. Um, okay. Any other thoughts? Let's um, let's hear another question. Is there another question about it is finished? Are we clear on what is finished? Um, yeah, and that 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 and I like the word. Unless anybody is having any, I can't see any hands. But if you do have a question, please let me know. Um, and um, I like the use of the word, Pastor Lil. You talked about uh, finish, and it means the same thing. But I think the word complete, which you used, what was for for me in a sense finished. Um, it, it, it's is it, obviously it means the same thing. And as you mentioned in the Greek, it's it's the same word. Tell us. It's the, it's the same word, complete and finish. But I think the word complete, in a sense, in our minds, in my mind at least, seems to, when you say it's complete, 
-hmm. you know, if you you re you run a race and you come to the end and, and you say it's finished, I've, yeah. you know, done everything. That word complete seems to bring a, a, a slightly different um, thing, that sense of completing an assignment, doing what it is that you've been asked to do, what you've been given to do. It is complete, it is done. And it wasn't just a, a, a saying, it, it had real meaning. So again, that, that helped me certainly, the, the complete um, as, 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 as long as well as finished. Yeah. Any other questions, anything in the chat? Okay, someone's still going back to the one, examine yourself, whether in the faith, okay. Okay, um, okay, everybody seems to have gone quiet, so I don't want to prolong it anymore, unless there are any final thoughts. Okay, um, just in terms of, um, just to go back to the issue of works, and, um, you know, Jesus has paid paid the, the, the price, um, the, the, the full and total price of our redemption has been paid on the cross. And um, yet we, we recognize that there is work for us to do, not to be saved, because we are saved by grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. We are saved by grace through faith, but yet there is a mission that God has called us to. And each of us is called to that mission, and there is work for us to do in that sense. Okay. Unless there are any final thoughts. Sorry, Pastor Paul. A thought yes. just came to me um, yes. on the subject of complete. Mm. Um, because you know, sometimes you can do an assignment mm. and you do it quickly, it's done, but it's not done very effectively. There's more yeah. you could do. Um, the completeness, the, the, it is finished with Christ. There is nothing, absolutely nothing else that could be done. It's complete. It's, 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 yes. it's fully done. Um, you know, so it's, it's like, it's a perfected um, stance of completeness. Yes, and, and you're right. And that for me is why, why the word complete seems to bring an, a, a, an added sort of um, clarity to it for, in my mind. It's complete. It's, and like you say, it's not just done, but it's complete. Because sometimes you can do it, but you don't do it very well. You don't complete all aspects of it, as you have said. But when it's complete, you know that, yes, you've done all that, that there is to be done. Okay. So once again, Pastor Lilith, we want to say thank you so much. It's been very interesting. Um, and I hope that throughout this week, that um, as we examine these seven sayings or in some cases they're called seven words of christ on the cross that we will we will indeed just take time to reflect because it helps us to understand the depth of god's love and the 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 the, the sacrifice that jesus made for us it gives us a deep insight into what he has gone through for us and also as we have said throughout is that um the words of a dying person. When you know you're dying and you, you, you don't have enough breath left to say very much, because Jesus didn't say very much on the cross. He chose his words very carefully. And so we must examine what he had to say. We must look at it. What did he have to say? He talks about forgiveness. He talks about being in paradise. He talks about rejection. He talks about his mother. Ensure that his mother was taken care of. He talks about... Um, you know, it is finished. He talks, he says, I thirst and into thy hand I commend in my spirit. These are interesting for Jesus felt it necessary for those to be his last words while he suffered and hung on the cross in agony. These are his words. We need to pay attention to them. We really need to pay close attention, not only to the, uh, the fact that they were said on the cross, but they, they, have, um, they have meaning. They have meaning not only then, but today, for us today. And it's important that just as Jesus uh, completed his work, we also must complete our work. He completed his mission. And when we come, Paul, Paul, Paul in fact, used the same similar term, didn't he? 
um, he said that in Timothy first in in um, Second Timothy four six to eight, he said the time of my departure has come. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who long for his appearing. So Paul also said, it is finished. I have done, I have finished the, 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 the course. I've fought a good fight. I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. And I think all of us must also okay. have and that something come, just come to me, Pastor. Okay, well. Although um, God had turned his back upon his son upon the cross mm -hmm. while he was laden with sin. It's, it, 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 when he was baptized, he said, this is my beloved son yes. in whom I'm well pleased. Mm. So although he, he turned his back upon his son, yet he was well pleased. Of, yes, of his son. He was well pleased. Mission accomplished. He was well pleased. Indeed. Yes, yes, indeed. And um, and I guess we could go into um, when we talk about God turning his back on on Jesus, and he turned his back only because of the sin that he bore. Yeah. And so, in a sense, oh. God was turning his back on the sin more so than on Jesus, but because clearly he bore the sins of the world, then God turned his back on him for that moment. But clearly, um, and, and I think it's a moment, it's momentary, mo it's just momentarily really that God, because as you've said, as you've said, God talked to be talking about Jesus said, you know, he, he's, he was well pleased, was, was well pleased with him, yeah. So thank you, thank you. Very interesting. Um, and I continue to reflect on that. And I hope you do as well. So God bless you. And those of you who are, well, let me say tomorrow is Easter Sunday. And um, as we have said, you know, yesterday that, you know, that um, it, that's not how the story ends. Yeah. It does not end on Good Friday. It does not end on Good Friday because Sunday is coming and there's a resurrection. Um, we are in, we can look back in hindsight, the, the disciples and those around Jesus at the time didn't quite get the message when he told them that he would suffer and die and, be, and ra rise again. So even at his death, nobody expected a resurrection. So that was, a, you know, you can imagine when someone dies and, you know, you know, just, they're gone, they're gone forever. But they did not get the message until afterwards that he came back to them, that what, what Jesus had said. But we, 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 we have hindsight and we know that he's, he, will be, he was resurrected. And so tomorrow we wanna to celebrate that. And even at this late time, it's good to invite someone, give someone a call, invite them to come to, 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 to service with you and to join and just to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This, this, is, this is one of the most a remarkable thing and for the christian faith the resurrection is so crucial when you think about it the resurrection is absolutely crucial and paul paul says this in in first corinthians 15 if there is no resurrection he goes and tells you a whole list of problems that the christian faith has if there is no resurrection so thank the lord pastor Lev, thank you again may the lord bless you really appreciate you coming tonight and sharing with us and may the blessings of God be upon you. God bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for your love. The scripture says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so, God, we thank you. Thank you for sending your Son into the world to die for sinners just like us. Lord, we thank you that he died and paid the price Oh God, he tasted of death for every man. Lord, he tasted of, of the sufferings of humanity and, um, and, the, and, and of hell, Lord Jesus, that we don't have to take partake in these things because Christ has suffered for us. And so we pray that you will be with us and all who uh, will hear and listen to this, this recording, that Lord, that somehow the message that you have paid the price the price, the full and total price of our redemption is paid. And all we have to do is to come by faith, trusting in the finished work of Christ on the cross. 
for our salvation. And we bless you, Lord God. Be with us, O oh God, as we go to our various churches tomorrow. I pray that you will just bless, Lord, all over this country, all over the world, as people come together to celebrate the resurrection. May your presence, Lord, your omnipresent, just be with us, Lord God. Oh God, and let your name be glorified, be lifted up as we sing, as we pray, as we, as we preach the word. Let your holy presence be with us, Lord God, and that many, Lord God, many souls will come to know you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. The Lord be with you. Have a great night and see you. See you tomorrow. God bless you. Good night. God bless you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. God bless you. Good night.